You see, that's probably my response after the All Blacks destroy Uruguay on the scoreboard at least. 73 nil at Rugby World Cup 2023. The last game for either side before it gets real for the All Blacks into the knockouts. I don't know for yourself as you watch a contest and whether or not you get a vibe beforehand, a sense about how things will flow, or even watching body language or those type of things leading into the match before the players arrive onto the field. When we got a picture inside the All Blacks change room, they were in a circle and Sam Kane was talking. Something said things aren't where they should be. And maybe that was a little bit in comparison to last week. And the All Blacks were up for Italy. They had the edge for Italy. And something said they're not there where they should be versus Uruguay. You can decide why that is and what that amounts to, but... What happened throughout the early part of the first half especially was indicative of a side that were there playing rugby but weren't on the job as required. A number of reasons could be, it could be the fact is they know what's going to happen, they know the ends of this contest and they're wanting to get through and even though they don't confess and say that because you don't do that at elite sport. If you're 5% off, if you're 10% off, if your attitude's not where it should be, and that requires discipline, that's down to discipline. That's down to the player taking responsibility for themselves and the team and being prepared to follow through. Maybe there was discussion beforehand and they were just wanting to put through a solid performance. Nine changes, I don't think that helped. I don't think that was the way forward. And you could argue maybe they should have made more because the injury to Tyrell Lomax could be significant. Of course he had to play. Of course he had to play. So let's maybe get that out of the way because he had, he needed more time on the field. Injuries are going to happen. However, if his injury to his medial ligament is more significant uh, or as significant as is perceived, and there is a bit of foreboding around the discussion, the way the players resp responded to him, then that could be the biggest issue leading out of Uruguay or Uruguay and into a likely quarterfinal, you would say, versus Ireland. So what are the match? I, think, I don't think we need to spend too much time on it. I think once the All Blacks got in front, once they were able to extend, then it was pretty clear where the result was heading. Really impressed with Uruguay throughout this Rugby World Cup. The way they approach, you can see they're well coached. You can see they play a lot together. They're hard at the breakdown. They're not only hard physically, they're also really competent in terms of their technique. And so they put pressure on the All Blacks. And if that's the area that concerns me heading into the quarterfinal, it's the breakdown. It's how the work is going to be able to be effectively not only retained, but also won the challenge of taking the opposition on. Have they got the ability to be able to do what they need to do? Of course. Will they pick the combination that I think best enables them to be able to apply? I don't, I'm not convinced. In fact, it seems like where they've been and, and where Foster and co have wanted to drive this side is a different place to where, where I would, for example, take the combination. But of course, <laughs> who am I? I'm sitting in a studio a long way from the coalface. So it's not my team and it's not my side that must run onto the field. So they must live and die by uh, by, by the, the, the names and numbers that, that they believe will get the job done. And so Foster does as a, lo as a loyal man and he has some loyal troops and he is probably going to go down or through with that ship. So... I'm not sure we can analyse a lot. It was good to see some changes into the second half. We saw Lester Fanganuka come into midfield. Then we see Damien McKenzie again showing why he has to be on the bench. I'd have Lester Fanganuka on the bench as well. I think he offers so much more. We need to be firing bullets. Especially because early on it may not necessarily go as well. and We may need to come from behind. That may be the way it transpires or happens for us in the quarterfinal. I think the other quarterfinal was 
well, again, we're projecting at this point, but the semi-final could be easier, will, will be easier than the quarter-final. I think we can probably say that without being disrespectful in terms of the sides and where they're ranked, even if it's... I mean, I'm discounting Scotland from this mix, but we're taking Ireland or South Africa. I'm taking Ireland as the likely opponent, then the other side, um, the opponent of the semi-final will certainly be a step down can't disrespect them, can't take them lightly, of course. You've got to turn up. You've got to be able to put it on, and that requires... That's about the South. And I think that's the all-black side. We saw versus Italy that when they were able to bring it to the table, then the attitude was there. And you could sense that. You could see that. I do like Artie Sevilla leading uh, the troops. I mean, the scrum was strong. Our line-out was good. Our breakdown... Our breakdown seemed, um, seemed muddy. They had a friend who... Uh, firm without Artie that uh, Kane and Jacobson was like it was molasses. In other words, you know, it was just it was just hard work. It, it took time, and maybe in the second half of the game started to speed up. They started to finish early on. The I think it was three I think three disallowed tries before the fourth one was given, and so it just took a while to get into the gears. It shows the All Blacks why they can really put scores on sides that aren't ranked as highly because they're able to cut and if there's no pressure being put on at the source the breakdown or the the scrum or the line out if they're able to get into their movement they're able to get the party started there's no side in white rugby that can finish as effectively with the ability in the individual skill set as long as you know, the passes, as long as the, the individual skills, the 1% type realities are there, which they generally are uh, when the All Blacks are on. So is it is it the ideal performance to head into the quarterfinal? Well, I don't think so. I don't think this run has been ideal. So it's not just this one contest, but what has been preceding it as well. And that means, can the All Blacks, can the All Blacks, is going to be the start of many sentences as we consider what will transpire. Of course the All Blacks can win a knockout. Of course they can. But what is going to happen in the next couple of days if uh, Tyrell Lomax is out? It sounds like, according to Foster, that uh, Fletcher Newell is going to be, is probably more precautionary because they both came off. But it may mean flying someone in from New Zealand. It may mean Joe Moody, who is a loose head, and moving off a, into the other side, under tight head, and using Joe Moody's experience. Maybe Joe Moody backs up Ethan De Groot. And it might mean an elevation for Tamati Williams, who has risen. He's one player who has risen, but it's going to be a stern test. I'd really do rate the Irish props, and especially Andrew Porter. So... I think I've got Andrew, as you say, Andrew Portal, the top, just flowed out there without me thinking. But the, the Irish loose head, the starting loose head, is very good. In fact, although probably Furlong is rated higher in terms of being around for a long time, when I look at the loose head, I see more from him, comparatively speaking. Of course, Furlong's very good and, and world class. However, I like what I see from the loose head, and I think he's still growing as well. So that's going to be a big point of contention. So thinking through the players, it's good to see Roy Guard, Roy Guard starting, excuse me. A couple of box kicks, or maybe one in particular. But you see why he offers so much, and the way he's able to run and dart, and able to beat, score to try with breaking the opponent's ankle. So as I think through, we saw some of, I mean, it was good for Geordie, good for Shannon Frizzell. Geordie Barrett, that is, the 12 and the 6, we want to see them. But... Uh, and, and congratulations to Sam Whitelock. They've got to, we've got to say that 150 test matches for the All Blacks. That's a serious feat that may never be beaten, well, not at least for a long time. That's a serious number to be able to have that longevity. What that requires of your body, what that requires of your form, what that requires of your consistency and your disciplines to keep the course going year after year after year. So what an amazing effort and likely to see him off the bench in the quarterfinal. So the All Blacks get five points. 73-0. Sounds really good. It looks really good. However, my own 
you know, to be frank, my own re response watching was rather flat. In fact, if not even more so. And you get the sense of these past four years are all coming to this point in time. And we've been pretty confident previously. I, I sent out a message that the only other, probably in the comparative position in previous World Cups, maybe the semi final in 1991 versus Australia, where Australia had shown some beforehand and we seemed we'd lost some players and we didn't seem where we needed to be. And of course, you're hoping because it's the All Blacks and the myth, the legend, the history, excuse me, all comes together. However, Australia turned up and really blew us off the park and we looked a step behind. Will that happen in the quarterfinal? Well, potentially how we play the team, the way the team is framed is pretty quite different from that 91. So the dynamics may be distinctive. However, the challenge is there. They've got a few extra days to be able to get ready for Sunday morning New Zealand time. It's Friday morning New Zealand time, so they've got some period that will be probably exhausted a little bit trying to decide what's going to happen with their front rowers and especially their tight heads and what to do. Talk afterwards was maybe where they bring, bring over some props, like fly them out now, and uh, certainly money's on an issue. So have them on board and ready if, if something goes to custard. We may get an indication because the, the playoffs, the quarterfinals for, in the New Zealand national provincial competition, uh, they're happening. They're starting tonight. And if, say, Joe Moody's not playing for Canterbury, you'll probably get a, re a reasonable indication about at least the trajectory over in France. So the All Blacks 73, Uruguay nil. A one-sided defeat on the scoreboard, yet a match in a contest that didn't really provide any type of substantive answer on the All Blacks' future hopes. Did we expect that it could do that? That's a good question. Again, it is Uruguay, and they have shown a lot, but it is Uruguay. But I think if we had seen much the same lineup and they had continued with good patterned play and you'd seen them, they were able to begin to or continue to follow through in some of the fundamental core structures of the game. Then that says to the individual, that's a good way to go. So Steve Hansen mentioned that on TV last week. Not making any changes. These guys need another run. Well, there are nine, so a number of changes. Yes, some have got more game time. But just as the All Blacks have been expected previously and other sides have beaten them in many World Cups, so many will be expecting the opposition of the All Blacks to be the side that takes out the quarterfinal. And that isn't a bad place for the All Blacks to be. But what they're going to need to do, they're going to need to execute. What they didn't do versus France, they're going to need to do in the quarterfinal. They need to learn those lessons, take those opportunities, because if they do, if they do take those opportunities, then they've got enough. France, if they scored two tries in the first half from their attacking raids, they didn't. And then they scored the try after half time. That's an probably an insurmountable lead. And it will be, I believe, if you can get in front of Ireland in a quarterfinal context, all that that means for Ireland, who have been able to get past that, all the pressure that comes forward and, and from behind, number one, and the expectation, probably what will be a large Irish contingent. So all those factors are a part of it. So you've got to, there's so many more streams and trajectories and nuances that are part of what will define the likely quarterfinal of Ireland versus the All Blacks. We'll talk about that in the coming week, but I'll leave it there. I won't say too much more. I might not even watch it a second time this one. I'm not sure. We'll see what, what uh, the day brings. Uh, but it's the All Blacks who are safely through now. So that's a positive. Now they need to build a game plan. Joe Schmidt's going to be very important this week. We'll talk more about that. And uh, we'll see. Because the rugby is about to get real. I trust you enjoyed this video. I trust that you are empowered to like and comment. And maybe even share. And if you haven't subscribed, please do to this I Am Johnny King channel. What say you? All Black 73, Uruguay, nil. 
at the Rugby World Cup. Tomorrow, France, Italy. So, pull A will be decided in about 24 hours. I am Johnny King.